there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I'm coming at you with the 10 last books tag. Sean the Book Maniac was kind enough to tag me, and the tag is originally by Mark Nash. I've seen this one going around, and I've had a lot of fun thinking about answers for the questions, so let's get right into it. Question 1. The last book you didn't finish. This was simple because it wasn't all that long ago. It's The Fears of the Rich, The Needs of the Poor, My Life at the CDC by William H. Fagey. It wasn't necessarily this book's fault. I just wasn't in the mood, really. When I first jumped into the book, I was very happy that instead of a chronological thing going on, it was stories from different times in his career. But I don't know, I just I lost steam and it wasn't the right book at the right time, so I ended up DNFing it. Question two, the last book you reread. I don't really reread books all that much. I end up finding myself wanting to go forward and find my next favorite book instead of going back to favorite books. But the book that I've probably reread the most is Guilty Pleasures by Laurel K. Hamilton. It's just a comfort read. I love me some vampires. I love me some procedural police work and this is all that rolled into one. And after going through a good chunk of this series, going back and seeing how Jean-Claude looked, you know, when he first met uh, An Anita. <laughs> What's her name? Anita. It's fun. I flip through it every now and again, every few years probably, but otherwise, not a big rereader. Question three is what is the last book you bought? And for me, that's Kino Nani Tabeta by Yoshinaga Fumi. The title translates as What Did You Eat Yesterday? And it has been translated into English, at least the first few volumes under that title. It's a story about a gay couple and it was described to me as a foodie manga. They love making delicious things. And apparently each chapter has a recipe that goes along with it. So you can almost learn how to cook things by reading the manga. It also has little tips and tricks about why, kind of like food science-y type stuff it sounds like, about why certain things, why you have to do something in a certain order, or why you brine something before you cook it, or whatever. So I'm looking forward to that one. Question four is the last book you said you read, but you didn't. And like Sean, I think I would have to go back to college for this one in that like I had to read a book for a class and then didn't quite get through it by the time the test came around sort of thing. The class that sticks out to me the most in that respect was my Japanese history class. I was required to take a year of it. I did not like it. There is a lot of Japanese history. Didn't like the teacher so much and the books that he assigned. Oof. And he did it through a literature lens a lot of the time. So reading no plays was cool. Reading the pillow book of Sei Shonagon was awesome. But other books, I just did not know. Each semester was set up so that we could skip one of the required reading books and you would still be able to do okay on the essays. So one semester, one of the books was Tale of the Heike, which is long. It's like 500 pages and it's heavily annotated and I remember the print being small. I noped out of that pretty quick. I am grateful for some of the other literature and it wasn't modern literature, it was history type stuff, some nonfiction as well that I'm glad I read but oh, yeah, so I didn't get through all of them. Question five, the last book you wrote in the margins of. And I'm pretty sure that was something from the Nate Doshite series. This is a series of books, you can see this is number nine. This one's actually psychiatric nursing and they're aimed at nursing students and it's dialogues between cat nurse right there, Neko Nasu, and nursing students going over different points to remember for standardized exams. There's charts, there's diagrams, and it's at a level that makes it really easy to study. So I have a set of these and sometimes I just study them just to study and other times if I know I have a patient with a particular disorder or disease and I want to know more, I'll pick this up and I'll go through and I will often make notes and highlight and stuff as I go. So this one. Question six, the last book you had signed. I'm not a big person with signed books, not big with meeting authors. And thinking back, the last time I met an author was 2006, it was John Hodgman. He was a PC at the time and he signed my book and he was super duper nice. Many authors are nice people and interesting to listen to, of course, but I would just rather meet them through their work than as a person, to begin anyway. Question seven, what is the last book you lost? And I don't, I can't really think of any. 
It's not that I'm particularly amazing at not losing things. I'd lose scarves and stuff just like anyone else, I think. But I do read mostly digitally. And whenever I leave the house, it's usually with my e-reader. And I'm not losing that. Mm -mm. Not gonna happen. Way too expensive. Paper books are heavy and I don't carry them in my bag so much because weight and space are at such a premium, especially when I'm going to work. Sometimes I'll take something to the cafe especially to study it, but I'm pretty good about not leaving it there, so I, I don't know. Question eight, the last book you had to replace. This was all me. So I had a digital advanced copy of Passing Strange, which I've talked about several times. I absolutely love this book. And after I read it, I knew I wanted two copies for myself. So I went online and I ordered the two copies and I went into my Japanese Amazon account and I was in such a rush that I didn't notice that they were sent to the dorm I stayed at for study abroad over 10 years ago. So somebody at the dorm got two amazing books and I'm glad and I had to reorder and replace those. Question nine, what's the last book you had an argument over? An argument is really strong. Who argues that strongly about books? And you can disagree. You can have a spirited discussion. So that's what I'm going with. The last book I had a spirited discussion about was Things Fall Apart. A while ago, I had a patient who was from Africa and he said this was his favorite book. And I saw him every week for a while. So he kept on bothering me. He's like, you gotta read it, you gotta read it. And I did read it. And we had an amazing discussion because I'm coming at it with my American point of view and he was coming at it from his own personal point of view. And it was a wonderful discussion and a great way to kill time in the waiting room, I must say. And question 10, what is the last book you couldn't get a hold of? And these are books where, I mean, I could get a hold of them. They might be slightly expensive and, or I could get a digital copy, but because I'm picky, I ended up waiting. And for one of them, I'm still waiting. One was War Day, which I've done a review of, which I'll link here and down below. It's very cheap online, but I wanted my own physical copy. So to find one that was reasonably priced and would ship to Japan, Took a while, but I got there. The second book that I could get easily enough, but I'm being picky about is Working by Studs Terkel. I actually started reading this one digitally and I just knew that I wanted to read it hard copy and not just hard copy, but hard cover, preferably an ex library copy. I just think that would be the most satisfying. That's not because the book is out of print or anything like that. It's just me being picky. So there we have it, the last 10 books tag. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did coming up with all the answers to the questions. And it wouldn't be a tag unless I tagged some other people. So I tagged Tiara over at Come Read With Me. She's a newer booktuber, so be sure to check her out. I also tagged Victoria over at Eve's Alexandria. Congrats on finishing your PhD. We're so happy to have you back. Here's a tag to help you ease back into things. And I also tag Doris over at Aldi Books. I don't think you've done this one yet and I'd love to see your answers. Take care, be well, thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video.